Hi. So, thank you for coming. So, yeah. My name is Errol Zudin Sa. I hope you got, uh, you guys are in the correct room. Uh, yeah, honestly, I, I, I didn't expect a large crowd or, or a large hall, hall like this. So, thank, thanks again for coming. And first and foremost, I think I would like to thank the, uh, Danny and uh, his team for making this uh, uh, happening. And again, uh, inviting me uh, to speak here in, in Auckland. So, yeah. So today's talk will be about you know a bit a little bit about machine learning kind of stuff. So anyone here are uh, rich fans? Yeah. Cool. So they're kind of uh, my uh, sort of inspiration. So I born and raised based on rich tunes. Uh, yeah, you know. So uh, pretty much the targets of today. Uh, uh, about a little bit about myself, what on earth is ML and, and, and stuff like that, uh, why we use ML, why we, you know, exploring on ML and for what reason, and a little bit on how to do that based on what uh, my pet project I've uh, been working around uh, and uh, some sort of a uh, little bit work-based uh, project as well, and a little bit of summary. Uh, yep. I'm... I came from that, you know, Malaysia, not far, but 10 hours flight from here. So, so yeah, uh, I reached in, in, in Thursday, I think. Yeah, uh, this is my second time in Auckland. Uh, uh, first time is back in four years ago, when I sp when I speak in Open Source Developers Conference in in Auckland as well. So yeah. Uh, uh, my daily dose of work is more about data. It's about streaming data or batch data uh, kind of stuff. Um, I'm also doing solution architecting in here and there, and pretty much everything that my boss asked to do. Same, same as you, I guess. And I try to be Bitcoin farmer, but you know it's not going to happen. I think in the near near time. So yeah. Uh, I was here, uh, I think I started off my speaking uh, adventure back in 2009, uh, basically on, on local open source uh, conference, talk, meetups, bar camp and whatnot, and, you know, uh, been speaking in Manchester United Kingdom in 2010. Uh, it's pretty much moving around the open source and kind of uh, PHP technology, uh, uh, application security as well. So. Yep, 2013, Auckland, Open Source Developers Conference. Anyone been there? I mean, attending Open Source Developers Conference back in 2013? No? Right. So it kind of gap between 2013 and 2016 because uh, I got my first baby's there, so I think uh, I kind of, you know, putting more time on her. So, yeah, building slides and learning to new technologies a bit, you know, kind of stuff. So in, in, in 2016, I'm kind of uh, jump off again to the you know, speaking arrangement and things like that when I've been duped from uh, my friends in one of the local uni back in Malaysia. Uh, initially, he promised that it's just a one hour talk. Uh, it's eventually like a one day workshop. So, bad him, right? So in, in, in August this year, uh, I started my, my, my first Python conference back in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, the Malaysia Python user, user group are organizing the Asia, Asia Pacific kind of conference, Python conference. Uh, we kind of had about uh, 200 people attending. And yep, we have Jessica Keller from US, the, I think one of the PSF members as well, directors. Now I'm not sure if she's still, she's still being with Dropbox or on, on her own. We also have um, Luis. Luis is one of the you know author of many Python books, uh, data scientists, and things like that. So uh, I would like to share some key points that both of them shared during during Py PyCon Asia Pacific. Luis shared a lot of stuff using you know how machine learning can making money. Uh, 
uh, and yeah, why not? And Jessica shared uh, one cool stuff about her and uh, her team bringing Python class to the prison, you know, teaching Python to the guy inside the prison. Uh, that's interesting to me. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not in the picture because, you know, I'm going, to, I don't know, somewhere. So, uh, it's not that you know simple. You have data, you have algorithm, and you come up with some sort of ML. Uh, people, some, some, uh, most of people think that ML can do magic stuff. So you know, it depends on what you're thinking. Uh, ML can do to you. Uh, this is one of the uh, simple explanation from data scientists Africa. So you know, human learn from experience. The normal robots uh, follow instructions, and the more intelligent uh, machines. Uh, then from data or experience, you can call it, right? So this, this is basically just a typical long, boring explanation by one of the guy, brilliant guy in, in Carnegie Mellon. Uh, yeah, you can read it. And this is, I think, uh, one of the uh, clearer and simpler explanation where is machine learning sitting and, you know, uh, starting off in the 80s and, and with the, you know, growing of data, a lot of data and, and capabilities of resources that we have now with clouds and things like that. So it, it kind of, you know, booming the AI and, and deep learning and machine learning uh, industries all, all through the world. This is basically from NVIDIA. Yeah. So can I have one uh, out of hand? How many of you guys are, you know, into the machine learning area? Building machine learning? And yeah, right, cool. Right, so, so basically I'm, I'm not a machine learning expert, so we kind of uh, just sharing my experience building stuff in, in ML, uh, not all, but just part of the algorithm, right? So why most guys are, you know, into machine learning? So when, when people like Google, Facebook, and whatnot are, you know, buying startups, buying, buying people into their uh, projects that, you know, uh, most of the tech, tech geeks like us, uh, you know, uh, want to be part of them as well. And this is one of the insights from CB Insights. These are the marketing analytics uh, experts that, you know, you can see that these top guys, uh, Google, Apple, and whatnot, Facebook, Microsoft, Intel, are buying, uh, ex uh, you know, rigorously buying all the startups to, to, to furnish their technology, furnish their initiative and projects, right? Uh, this is as of 2017. I guess that next year or next five years will be more, you know, by maybe you should start your own startup in AI or ML soon, yeah. So, yeah, you can see a lot of money coming out for, so money was one of the, you know, main point uh, why uh, tax giants are paying sellers to, to AI talents as well. Uh, I guess that's not AUT. So, but, but universities are losing their, 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 their top guys in AI, so, and they are not, I mean, Compared to those uh, big guys with lots of money, uh, unless you have your own very loyal uh, guy, you cannot, uh, you know, hold them so far. So this is another random, I mean, normal uh, things that you can do with ML as well, from web search up until space. Uh, NASA also using ML, and stock fraud, credit check, banks are using ML and whatnot, right? Uh, this is, uh, I saw this news quite frequently, I mean, yeah, why, how one of the uh, Washington County Sheriff Office are using ML to help them uh, identifying criminals by, based on the mark shots, you know, the processes using AWS services, and they are helping, uh, just, just really uh, doing stuff that really helps people. Right, interesting. Um, also, this is not, basically not my passport, but before, Coming here, I double, triple check that my passport is in the secure places for my kids, so I'm not having this kind of situation as well. So basically, uh, what we are trying to do is drawing lines to data. With a lot of data, we, we, we kind of, you know, uh, interesting, interestingly find out insight based on the data. So this is why I thought I'd draw a delete this as well. Sorry. So uh, some, some interesting. Uh, uh, explanation from uh, Berkeley Machine Learning Group. Uh, uh, some of the reason that 
you know, how to separate the data based on classification methods. Uh, this is some examples that you can use uh, when you label your, for example, apples and orange. Eh? You can see the whenever decision boundary is being set, this is the lines between your data. So when we have more complicated algorithm or, or, or complicated uh, decision boundary, you can tend to have uh, uh, more interesting lines there. Yep. And the other part is the reg regression when you want to describe your data. This is example by, by Berkeley when they want to predict uh, house price based on the, uh, you know, the, the space of the square foot kind of thing. Uh, come up with label data, probability, and, and, and predictor. So uh, this is why we need ML, I think, to define or to, to draw nicely uh, to, to explain to people uh, how we could use ML to explain to them. Uh, basically, this is uh, one, uh, one of the interesting projects by uh, Brown University, uh, where their students. Uh, I think this is quite interesting if you want to know more about the, what the meaning of those lines or graphs of charts. Uh, as far as, as my uh, uh, journey with ML, uh, I just started Python, honestly, uh, very deep, just about two years ago. Uh, we, we are building uh, our own big data analytics platform back in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. So uh, top-down solutions is based on Python. Uh, just recently, I think about six months, we are building our own ML. Uh, uh, function uh, and features uh, in our backend. So what we find out, uh, based also based on our findings, so this is uh, these are the core elements, core features that uh, you, you need to uh, uh, to dive into if you want to move into ML. So basically, uh, you know, standard formulate problems, design solution, bring up data technology to to use to master and build your own model, this is the tough part, uh, evaluate, fine tune, uh, and re recreate that, and package it nicely. So the first one, uh, this is simple one, uh, you need to describe uh, what's benefit from your, your solution, your problems, and flow step by step, and make sure everyone is agree agreeable on that, right? So data, importantly, you need to prepare the right data, uh, you need to pre-process, you know, repeat the process again until you, you, you kind of have a more solid and, and, and uh, 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 the, the very best data that you think that will help you in the, in the end of the project. And remember that when you have your, your better data in your you know, data sets, it, it could be like you know, producing so many outliers uh, uh, in the end. Uh, yep, that's why we choose Python, because they have all for machine learning. And there are a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, cloud-based solutions as well in ML. You can try Microsoft Azure, uh, machine learning, uh, GCP, Google platform as well, right? Uh, this is uh, by far the most challenging part when you build the model. Uh, you would crash your system, crash your servers, uh, you know, uh, spend a lot of money uh, to build, train, and, and repeat those core processes. And the fine-tuning to get the best data to get the best accuracy level, and how you measure the performance, how you you know you know train and test all those data. Uh, uh, machine learning mastery. Uh, one of the guy uh, core in, in machine learning mastery. This is one of my favorite uh, reference. Uh, Jason Brown Brownlee, daughter. If you know which one algorithm that to use, why why you use machine learning? Interesting. Uh, yeah, I think the the since. I'm working with my, I mean, with somebody else. So end of the day, I need to impress the stakeholders, the bosses, right? So you need to package nicely uh, as, as far as whatever we agreed uh, from the earlier phase, earlier phase of the project kickoff. Right, uh, anyone of you guys have experienced this? This is full blown. You know, all processes, all I don't know, crazy numbers of CPU usage. I don't know. This is basically this machine, uh, 16, 16 gig of RAM, and i7 processor. Uh, I don't know. I will discuss this on the end of the slides, but yeah. All right. I will share one, uh, basically two samples for today. Uh, one is the uh, uh, 
using using back whatever that you know being discussed earlier the the, the, the the case study the best practice of to me uh, this is two of the most uh, lovely guy in this world I think uh, I got this from Twitter bus so yeah I hope I hope they don't the NSA will won't hear this like in so basically the the problem is that uh, uh, they they wanted to build some sort of like uh, sentiment analysis uh, based on whatever that Mr. Trump says on Twitter. So based on that, when he mentioned, he mentioned anything, uh, company, for example, Toyota, or Nissan, uh, whatever, Kia, uh, the next day, you know, that happens, right? So this is an interesting project. This is an interesting problem that you want to show. Anyone haven't tried this? Right, this is when Trump mentioned Ford, so you can see the difference between this and this. Right, right. this is a problem. So this is the solution introduced by Trump to cash. <laughs> I find of this very interesting, you know, how they, you know, see the problem, see the interesting project to work around, so yeah. Uh, Trump to cash is basically a Python solution, a project by one guy. Uh, you can follow the GitHub. Link. I will share this afterwards. And uh, they, they use Google Cloud Natural Language API. Uh, you can try that as well. And using Wikidata query services. And the you know the economical process of this is using tracking API. I'm not sure it's still working or not, but you can try. So so this is basically the the interface for uh, from Google Machine Learning Natural Language API. Um, this is the presentation how you could make or break the money from, from whatever that, you know, Trump to cash, right? Make money, yeah. So this, the second part of the uh, sample that I want to show today is uh, one of my inspiration back in Kuala Lumpur, how we built text summarization uh, or classification based on whatever that streaming data we have, you want to, to or new, for example, news or social media things. You want to classify what kind of stories that people are, people are saying, people are talking based on that. So yeah, the ML program is text summarization or classification. We use KeepGram uh, continuous bag of words. This is all related to text, text things, or whatever that you want to uh, classify. So we use Python most of the time, and LTK for the corpus, the data, and what to write and GenSim for, and FastTech for, for the uh, for the libraries and and wrappers, uh, basically what the vag is from Google and FastTag is from Facebook. Yep. The source of data, for example, is uh, we use Brown Corpus. Brown is uh, Brown Corpus is one of the most popular and use uh, the, the best the research and engineer and from Brown University, and Wikipedia is one of the common uh, data source that you can have there. Right. Uh, I'm not trying to do to my Jupyter, but let's try it anyway, right, to show you something. Can you guys see that? Is that good? Right, basically, uh, yep, this is inspired by Mr. Mohit. Uh, first of all, you need to download data, uh, whatever data you have. Like I said, using Brown and pre-process the uh, Wikip Wikipedia data text and train the model. Uh, uh, make sure that you use GenSim and, and, and FastText probably. And using uh, you can see that when, uh, on this one, you can have the samples there. This is when your resources getting crazy, right? Um, full bar. So, yeah, you can see that, yeah. When you, you, when you train, uh, this is uh, one of the uh, limited uh, Wikipedia texts. Uh, this is around 100 meg of samples. Uh, this is amount of time that being uh, processed and generate your model, basically. And this is the larger data sets. I, I think it's about 700 megs of Wikipedia text. And it could, you know, spend more time on this, obviously. 
So this one, these guys are comparing the results based uh, against your model. And this is when you want to uh, check out the accuracy level for with 2 vec or, or, or fast text. And yep. Okay, this is basically just to want to, you know, uh, uh, showing the accuracy and uh, based on the semantic and synthetically uh, uh, words available. Uh, this is uh, how, uh, when we want to measure the accuracies based on a larger corpus. Uh, this is when I use Text9. Text9 is a Wikipedia larger database. Um, you can see that as well. And uh, I use Matplotlib to easily visualize whatever that being uh, model and test up, up, up front. Yep. This is the uh, base data, Brown USD corpus. Uh, use semantic and synthetic. You can see that uh, fast tech kind of, you know, performs a bit better compared to those um, Jensen, what the back. And we use, uh, if you use uh, text 8 data, Wikipedia data, 100 meg, you could more uh, improve the result. And when using more, uh, 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 a bigger set, set of model base is kind of, uh, Obviously, take more time, and but the accuracy level is improved. But that's basically what, what I'm to share today. Uh, going back to this one. Yep, that's why uh, I'm talking about this now. Uh, when you train, uh, you need to kind of uh, predefine uh, what was your need uh, because it, it costs you a lot of money building those kind of things. And uh, initially, I want to put a long list of summary uh, for this talk, but I'm, when I browse through around, I think most of, most of us could be, you know, know that as well, when you have to build your own model. And this guy from Google, uh, one of the tech lead in, in Google, give a, give a, a nicest words of, on ML. Uh, it's a lot of work. It's a, I mean, the best summary that I can give. Uh, I would like to end this talk with uh, one tweet, random tweet from I'm developer. Uh, yeah, with this, I, I thank you. If there's any, if there's any question, I'll try to answer. Uh, what was your second sample? Where, where your example you were trying to uh, classify? Text summarization. So what do you mean by that? What was the? What, uh, what were your it's, it's kind of um, to summarize. Uh, for example, you have a lot of text in one news, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to classify that as uh, you know a, a national, an economical kind of kind of kind of a, a source or or sports kind of elements in that. So, so you want to know, because a lot of data may be talking about different, different, you know, subject. So that's one of my summary. Um, just to, to clarify from that question, so you were using the Wikipedia corpus, which Sorry? is classified into, into different subjects. We're using that to train yep. your system, so that's, already classified into sport or economics. So uh, how, how many classifications does it have? I mean, in the Wikipedia system? Uh, there's a lot. I mean, for, for this pre, you know, kind of pre-processing, uh, like kind of first phase of things, uh, I would like to uh, normally work around on the uh, simple, simple size, like one meg and then, uh, sorry, 100 meg and then move forward to 700 megs. And, and if you go into Facebook fast tech, they, uh, even Google have their own pre-trained data that you can download in multiple languages, right? So if uh, working around English is quite simple, quite easy because so many pre-trained data that you can use, Wikipedia, uh, Facebook fast text, and things like that. But back in Malaysia, we have a lot of languages like Malay, 
Chinese kind of things. I believe that in, in, in other parts of the world, like, like New Zealand also have uh, a specific language as well, local language as well. So that kind of uh, amount of you know, work and data that we, we're working around. Thank you.